Hey gang, Lisa here from Call That Girl with another quick Outlook tip of the day. Before I start the tip though, you'll notice I'm not at my desk. I'm going to try something new since I got a new selfie stick. I'm going to try to be out doing other things uh, in my videos because they can be pretty boring with my same background and everything else. And I'm trying to be more uh, creative for my new subscribers that I have out there because of my YouTube playlist challenge. Which, by the way, I want to thank everybody who's been listening to the playlist, watching them, learning, and participating. I'm down to 23,000 minutes now out of 66,000 I started at, so I only need 23,000. So if you are watching here and want to watch the videos and learn, it's uh, 1,041 minutes. <laughs> it's a lot. But uh, the playlists are down below in the, down below, down there. Uh, the quick tip that I'm putting out today is Gmail IMAP synchronizing issues. I'm going to title the video this way. Uh, the problem is last week I took at least 10 calls from people who told me that their IMAP was having problems. And um, if I see like 10 people in a week having an issue, to me, I keep my eyes on that because I don't typically take 10 calls with one problem. The last time I took 10 calls with one problem was last summer. I believe when search broke, which if you're a technician watching this, search still constantly breaks because our clients are running their updates whenever they want to. They're running them, so they don't run them at all, and then it hits and, you know, and then they have the problem because it's so far back. Um, anyway, last summer the search was really a bad one, and so I try to keep my eye on stuff. Typically with Gmail and IMAP, when it's not synchronizing, there's two main problems. One is... Um, too much email just bare bones about it too much email and people you know they're pushing the limits right now with uh with outlook 2010 a good guide which i try to tell people for imap to not break is literally two to four gigs that's what i tried to scale it down to for my clients 2013 and 16 can handle more uh i try to stay in the six to eight range i mean when clients have over six gigs on imap i already just tell them you're gonna have a problem you will and it's maybe not now, but in the future. So then we have to take your email off the server and put it into a local PST file. Now the thing about that is some techs are like, well, everything should be able to be there. Well, Gmail is unlimited. It allows everything in the world, but the problem is Outlook cannot handle the traffic. You know, so it needs to be thinner. So literally you have to take the email um, out of, what I do is I take it from the inbox, sent and deleted. We start there. Then I go and put that into a local PST file so the clients can still search it at least. They can't take it mobile. It has to stay local. Then I try to make sure that the important and all mail folders are removed from the view of Outlook. You can do that in the back end of uh, Gmail through the browser, log in and do the settings, go to the labels area and turn those off. And then once you turn them off in the browser, then in Outlook you have to close Outlook, and let it sync up or sometimes you have to reboot you know or sometimes you have to unsubscribe to those folders in Outlook too. Now this is sounding a little too confusing for you and you're watching it you can hire me to help. I will tell you it's usually one to two hour job and they're in short appointments too because I always back up everything before I do anything. Backing up is so so wise with IMAP you guys let me just tell you that very wise. I back up every day for people constantly. So I don't trust IMAP, basically. So that's kind of it. Uh, quick, I don't know, hopefully this is a quick video for you to learn from it. And um, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Please comment below. I took my YouTube Creators course, so I've learned some little tricks here on how to keep you guys engaged. And uh, hopefully you will stay a follower of my channel. That's it, folks. If you have any questions, email me, Lisa, at callthatgirl.biz, or you can... Uh, Call me at 612-865-4475. Hope I said that right. Email me at lisa.callthatgirl.biz. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.